women in, uh, in the context of study here. Don't forget assignments posted at the end. We're not going to review those anymore at this point in time. You should be aware of those. Essentially, you're an AP student organization is key. Moving forward here, we have our first document and only document of the day. Content always provided. So we're going to partition this off here. One thing I would take note of here is that the fact that this is hailing from the New York Historical Society. Okay, that is an important thing because this is an archived document, meaning bias, not bias, uh, credible, not credible, it is preserved for a purpose. It's preserved for a reason for historical study. So that is an important idea that we might want to revisit either in context or critique. Okay, now this here, this means that this has been a digital archive. Okay, so if you don't understand why that's included, it's a digital archive. I'd write that down. Okay, this is hailing from a source that is available for you all to, to peruse through at your will. Uh, that can be either be checked out from the Historical Society or purchased entirely. Any questions on that? Sir? CD, is that like, what, is that what, like, it's literally compact disc. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, moving forward down here, woodcut. That's an important idea for content. You, again, it's your three points, wherever you want to go with this. I'm just going to show you all the different points you could have. There's a third, okay, from the New Touch on Times, a daughter of liberty living in Marblehead. Okay, that's another point there. And then the year is another point. Any questions on content? Okay, let's look at context. What do we have here for important messages that must be discussed that could be defended in the source? Go ahead, sir that the woodcut may be portrayed differently because it is a digital archive like, uh, up here on the screen. Okay, so you're saying that the actual woodcut itself may appear slightly different because this is just a digital representation? Correct. Possibly. We're going to stick with the fact that it's a woodcut right now. Okay. okay, so it's a woodcut, meaning what's the use of it? Printing press. Printing press, okay? So this is a component of propaganda or it's an advertisement, if you will. So woodcut equals printing press. Meaning, if the intent of this image is to be what? Presented. Presented. Multiple times to be represented in the colonies to society for some purpose or another. All right. The idea here, if we presented this, we're going to dip it in ink, stamp it, and get it to the people. All right. Woodcut is the first X, week, X equals important message here. Now, what's another one? Emphasize oh. Please, go ahead. Emphasizes military due to the hat, the colonial hat, and the gun, or the weapon. Okay, military, we have a few different icons of uh, the military here. The hat adorned to the lady's head, as well as the clear representation of the firearm. Now, is this firearm to scale? What do you guys think? No, no, I don't think that's way too big for... No. Do you think? No, I would say yeah. Yes. Yes. Back then, using technology, that firearm is to scale, all right? So if you consider, I mean, we don't know the actual height of the lady in the image, but you know contemporary times back then, average female heights is probably looking 5 to 5'4". Five, 5'4 four. Five, four would be a taller lady. So if you think of it like that, and because this is a more musket style uh, weaponry, with, of which you use black powder with the ramrod to stuff in, and then project the ball forward, that is accurate, okay? Now that's something to consider. What else do we have here? So we have the woodcut, the fact it has a clear military theme. Was there anything else here with the military theme that you might want to use? Slide in the background. Very good. The representation of the fort in the background. Okay. Does anyone recognize that flag? It's kind of hard to see. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The rough design. Big Ten Conference. Maryland. Maryland. Very good. I'd write that down. Okay. <laughs> Look at and again though without that lead though obviously if you if you envision the. The, uh, the yellow is the black and the red. If you color it in now, you can see it, yes? Yeah. Okay, so you now know where Marblehead is, right? Think of it like that. We're just looking at this image and how much information we're pulling out. We now know that Marblehead's located in Maryland, Maryland into the Re American Revolution. Okay, anything else that you can have here? We should have at least one more. Sir? I feel like it's supposed to be like patriotic. It's, like it says daughter of liberty and she's holding like a firearm and Good. No, absolutely. Okay, patriotism, and here's your evidence due to the clear representation of the military, both in the hat and the weaponry. Kind of, and I heard a conversation earlier where they're not really representing a woman in high fashion here in her actual appearance, but again, she's promoting the military, so this is accurate. Okay, you could argue a slight smile, um, but nonetheless, she's proud due to her positioning. She's also, uh, as far as military icons, holding what is this? It's a 
powder horn. Okay, it's a powder horn. All right. So she's clearly proud to be holding her powder powder horn, her musket, and like the student also said, a daughter of liberty. Okay, you are a member of this uh, of this movement. You are a member of this of this culture. Okay, so woodcut military patriotism. Those are three great axes for your context. Let's go to critique. Who's the author? No, no specific author as far as who carved it, but it is originally presented in that paper. Okay, so I'd write that down. No specific author, originally presented 1779 in the New Touch on the Times. And that would have been the, the print source that you all would be able to access in Maryland. Okay? So that being said, author credibility. Limited. Limited. We don't know the exact carver, but we know this has a clear purpose. Okay, you could consider this the rough draft of a political cartoon if you want to. Okay, as those would be reprinted, this would be the initial carving to be reprinted. Excellent. All right? Audience. Yes. The colonists like support of the military. Colonists in support of the military, you could argue that. Patriots. Maryland, because they're trying to get people from Maryland. You can go with Maryland, people in Maryland. There's a specific demographic that has not been addressed yet. All of what you just said, but a more focused group. Women. Women, very good. Okay. Women, absolutely. Now, here you could say women or female colonists in Maryland. Right? You don't, we already know the location, we've got to that point. The Daughters of Liberty, okay? Obviously, it's expected that men serve in the military, but this is a representation of a female and what she can do for the war effort. Women, absolutely, that's your audience. If, it's, if you do not have it down, it will be marked down because that is a focused group. Credibility of the source as a whole? Limited. Why? Uh, you know, not. I think it's weird. New York Historical Society. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, you could go with pretty good here. It's been preserved in the New York Historical Society. All right, is this biased? Can, yeah. can you really, are you biased here though? Is this saying that one thing or another? another? Yeah, it's just no, it's just an image saying you could do this, you could serve. So no real bias has been presented. Okay, if you want to say it's positive propaganda, sure, rally and support, but is that really propaganda? Usually when you attach propaganda to something, it's swaying a clear and defined opinion. There's no real opinion here. It's just saying you can serve. Do your job. Okay? Any questions? Super. Let's finish our war. Major military events of the war. Severe losses of Bunker Hill. We continue through Boston. That being said, other conflicts that we're looking at here, Long Island and Washington Heights. Now, entering this slide, we were, what's our record? Everyone remember? Three and one. Three and one. Three and one. Three and one. We had our frontier. Okay, good. Right? Lord Howe, which is our British general, and again, on that pretest that you guys took, the one that doesn't belong, General Howe, is oh, British. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Relocated his center of operations to New York. Washington's forces attempted to drive the British out, defeated at Long Island and Washington Heights. What's our record now? Three and three. Three and three. We're 500. Things aren't looking that great anymore. Okay? Moving forward. Defeated the Hessians at Trenton and the British at Princeton. Okay, yes, the location of the college. What's our record now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, five and three. Five, five and three. three. Okay. Boom. Who are the Hessians? Anyone? They're Germans. German. They were bought. Mercenaries. Mercenaries. Absolutely. Yeah. German mercenaries, soldiers for hire. Excellent. British devised a plan to divide the colonies. Now, here's their plan. This is what we're going to do to create absolute regional tensions. Burgoyne in Canada, St. Ledger in the Great Lakes region, Howe in the South. Okay? We'll organize in New York, but we're going to separate the colonies into one two, three regions, okay? We're gonna create a multiple front war because we know that a united front, they could stand against us. There's a history there. We're five and three, we're losing technically, okay? If we can create multiple fronts here, and that's something you wanna write down, MF, multiple fronts, that's what we're looking at. With this little component here, we can win this war. Unfortunately, Howe's gonna move south instead of north. St. Ledger was forced to retreat. So this plan does not work. Right. Nonetheless, Howe managed to capture Philadelphia and defeat Washington's forces at the battles of Brandywine and Germantown. What's our record? Six and three. Yeah, six and 
How? British general captured Philadelphia, defeated. Oh, five and five. No, five and five. Philadelphia, Brandywine, Germantown. Five and six. Okay. Now we have a losing record. The British are gaining confidence. They're gaining momentum. Things aren't looking that great for us. And again, consider this as our season. Our football team is the Patriots. Now we have a losing record. Okay, we're trying to make playoffs, which would be winning the war. Okay. Washington forced to retreat to Valley Forge. We've already discussed this. Winter supplies. It was an iconic event, that survival. Okay. Imagine the winter we had last year. Not so much the snow, but the days we had absolute bitter cold. Okay. With what you have on, okay, first, uh, this student right here, with what he has on, we'll say the hoodie instead of it being a hoodie would just be like a woolen jacket. He has boots on, but his feet are wet, which means what's going to happen? Frostbite. Frostbite. Okay, you're looking at an average of 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside in a cloth tent. Nice. And you're hungry. Why would you want to keep fighting? Okay, war weariness. It's a psychological issue, especially World War I in those trenches, okay, where you have all of that plus artillery being launched in and rats everywhere. War weariness sets in. Why am I even here anymore? That's what we're, we're trying to battle here, and Washington will do a great job keeping his people focused. Nonetheless, Fortune came with Burgoyne's forces defeated at the Battle of Saratoga. What's our record? Six and six. Six and six. We're back to 500. Now, what is the most th important idea with the Battle of Saratoga, 1777? We're going to draft a big, big athlete here. Final support from France. The French. Okay, we just picked up the French on waivers. All right, that's what we needed. That's a big pickup in the sport. Think, like I said, think of this in the, in the form of sports here. We just picked up the French on waivers. All right, would be like, for example, the Lions recently. All right, their kicking problem. They they picked up a great kicker. All right, they canned the one that's not working. I don't even know if he made it to the locker before he had to turn his jersey in. Okay, canned him. We hired a guy who has a sketchy pass. The French have a, a, a complex, convoluted pass in war. Absolutely. But nonetheless, they hate the English, and we need people like that. Okay, moving forward here. Turning point of the war. Horatio Gates, more than just successfully turned the tide. Again, this is where... When is the climax? When is the absolute pinnacle and important swaying momentum of this war is Saratoga? And that is one of the most important ideas of the American Revolution. Okay, still better about the French Indian War. We lost. We hate the British. We don't necessarily like the American colonists, but we all hate the British. And that works for them. Historians often speculate the result of war had they not become involved. Okay, had the French not become involved, what do you think is going to happen? We would have lost. We would have lost big time. Okay, that six and six record would have easily turned to six and twelve, and then eventually just total surrender. All right, but nonetheless, Sir Andy Clinton replaced Howe. 1781, Americans halt his forces in the South. We're gonna uh, we're gonna argue that this is also a win. The halt of the expansion of Clinton's forces. What's our record? Seven and six. Seven and six. Okay, now we're winning again. British Army General Cornwallis command marched to Yorktown, coast of Virginia, preceded by the Royal, protected by the Royal Navy. Unfortunately for Cornwallis, Lafayette and Admiral de Grassi, the flotilla is just going to dismantle in the maritime theater. What's our record now? Eight, no, We've taken out their supply lines at the sea. Oh, eight and six. Eight and six. Okay, this was a big one, and again, we don't have a navy. The French, though not a very impressive navy, have one already established. Okay? That was that huge pickup on waivers there. October 17th, 1781, with an appropriate titled song playing, the world turned upside down, Cornwallis surrenders at Yorktown, which will be the final, we win, 9 and 6. Okay? Think of it like that. The overall record, if you put this in perspe perspective of sports, considering major battles, obviously there were many, many others, but major battles, we win 9-6. to six. Okay? Any questions? Patriots win. Super Bowl. Go Colts. Go 15-1. Okay. Treaty of Paris. Working directly with the French to bring about pseudo resolution, Ben Franklin and many others sent to Paris. Now, look at some of the demands here. 
Where are French motives? Again, why did they become involved? Because they have a few things they want in Europe. All right, Britain lost. They can't defend a lot of things. They're stressed. They tax their people to the end of the earth, funding a war that didn't, they didn't win. Things that they are going to want. September of 1783, British and American delegates reach an agreement. Effective. Here's what we have. January 14, 1783, Treaty of Paris finally put together. Here's what we have as far as the terms. Okay, Again, the terms. The declaration of war is just a statement to the world we're going to war. But this is an absolute contract, if you will. Okay, Like the Treaty of Versailles. This is a contract. Britain recognized the independence. That's what we wanted most, first and foremost. Number one, take care of. Boundaries of the new nation established. North of the Canadian border, along the Great Lakes, west of the Mississippi River, south of Florida. Okay, so if you can imagine, I don't have a US map up in here. Um, but if you can imagine, basically, the entire eastern seaboard over to Lake Michigan in modern day Minnesota, draw a line straight down the Mississippi River all the way to Louisiana, and everything east is now us. Okay, who possesses everything to the west of, Lu of the Mississippi River? Right. The French, okay? Because remember, Thomas Jefferson is going to purchase that. Yeah. All right. They have everything to the west. We have everything to the east. What does the English possess? Nothing. They do. Canada. Canada. They have modern day Canada. So, okay. so in essence, they, yeah. Like said, they, they have Canada. Again, there are multiple people from all across the nation. Canada is an excellent country. Okay. American fishing ships given unlimited access to the waters of Newfoundland. Anyone know where that's at? Canada. Canada. Okay. And again, though, why do we want Newfoundland? Why do we want those waters? Anyone familiar with um, what's the name of the show? Wicked Tuna. Wicked Tuna, right? You you watched Wicked Tuna, okay? The further north they go, the colder the waters, the deeper the waters, but the more fertile the waters, right? Yes. So, if, and it, again, if you just move over to uh, over by Alaska, that's where Deadliest Catch takes place. Mm -hmm. Just move directly east to the Atlantic Ocean, there's a great wealth of fish there. All right, similar, does anyone know where the North Sea is? Yep. Where? Uh, there you go. Okay, right by the United Kingdom and Scandinavia. Its, no, its nickname is the Blue Meadows because fishing is so prosperous there due to the conditions of the water. Same theory to Newfoundland. That's why when many people look at this, they're like, okay, we can fish other places. Why do we need that? Okay, a lot of profit is to be had there. The United States government would not interfere legally with the British. Creditors and merchants seeking to collect debts. Okay, we will not interfere. You handle your economic affairs and we will advance. United States would compensate loyalists whose property had been confiscated during the war. Why are we going to do that? Because okay? if you look at it like this, we're like, uh, they were loyalists, you lost, not our problem, right? Absolutely not. Why do we want to compensate these people? Because they're wealthy. They they're have wealth. wealth. We want to make them happy. We want to make sure that the businesses they've already had established there continue functioning. Why do we want to do that? For our economy. For our economy, we want to tax. So write down tax there. Okay, why do we concern ourselves with those loyalists? We want to tax their profits. Okay, we don't want them just to close shop and go back to the United Kingdom, stay here, stay engaged, be unhappy, but keep making money. All right? Women in the revolution. Certainly conscious of the revolutionary goals, male family members fighting for liberty and the rights of man. Okay, and again, that's our theme there, rights of man, but nonetheless. You want your family to prosper, okay? Abigail Adams, familiar with her, yes? Yes. Okay. Here's a quote that I want you guys to analyze. New code of laws, I desire you, you would remember the ladies, and do not put such unlimited power in the hands of their husbands. What is she really asking for right now? We just want our freedom. What is she asking for? Right. Women's rights. Now, we will cover the women's rights movement in multiple points throughout this class, but many historians can argue, and I would write this down, some historians believe this is when your women's rights movement starts, upon the first day of freedom. So write that down. Women's rights movement starts here, potentially. Obviously, that will grow in a great wealth of momentum when we get nearer to Seneca Falls and other conferences of that nature, but some people say this is actually when it starts. Now, does anything happen with women's rights here? No. No. Super no. Absolutely not. Okay, but the, the, the idea is planted. 
It requires several years for the, the seed to germinate, but nonetheless, the, it, it's in the ground. Okay? Some enlightened ladies, such as Ben Franklin, favored female education. Ooh, that's a good idea, right? Female education. Okay? Rights to women. Female education. However, women at the end of the American Revolution, no better off than before. Now, one thing you need to have, this is a minority group. Okay? A lot of people consider white females not necessarily as a minority group, but during this time period, absolutely. And until the 1920s when they actually earned suffrage, some would even argue to this day as far as equal pay and rights to managerial positions, still a minority group. Okay? But certainly during this time period, they have no political rights. They have no more rights on paper, technically, than freed African Americans. Consider it like that. Okay? Women serve a pivotal role. Maintain farms. Okay? Eventually, these are going to be called what during the World Wars? Plant a liberty, garden. liberty or victory garden. Very good. Okay? Maintain farms. Stabilize the economy. Taking smaller roles than their male uh, counterparts were off to war. Served as nurses, and in rare cases, soldiers. That's the image that we looked at. Okay? So I'm going to write document there. That's the image we started class with. Smaller cases, not, not like a full regiment, but smaller cases. Every sense of the word, subordinate to men. Which means what? Lesser. Lesser. Lesser in paper, lesser politically, lesser economically, lesser psychologically. All right? So ladies, when you are able to vote, please vote. It took a world war for the, for the uh, United States to recognize that. Patriarchal society defined gender roles in the colonial period survived for many decades, centuries. What is a patriarchal society? Something like patriarchal. Don't, don't uh, confuse patri patriarch with patriotism. Oh, well, patriarch. Think of it like that, a patriarchal society. Does anyone know who the patriarch of your family is? Dad. Your dad, the or the eldest male. Okay, if I spun it like this, a matriarchal society means as Primarily driven by what? Women. Women. This is a society driven by men. Okay? Like, for example, here, when you talk about people's rights and who you're going to battle with, who are you constantly in battle with? Nowadays? The man, right? It is always the man, it's not the woman. Okay? When someone says so and so is always watching, who is it? The government. But what's another nickname? Man. Bigger brother. Oh, yeah. Is it ever bigger sister? No. History. His story. Consider that. Golf. Gentlemen's only ladies forbidden. That used to be like, that was like Patriarchal that. society. In country clubs, that was like that up till like. Oh, yeah. Read like, like 10 years ago. Like, oh, yeah. even then, uh, strong female athletes in golf and other sports, they're feared. Okay? That, which is why they're openly subjugated because it's fearful of the fact that a woman might be better at the sport I participate yeah, the first, in. The first woman member at Augusta. Was just like in 2004. Yeah. Like, okay. Blacks of the Revolution. We've covered one minority group. Let's cover the other. First draft of the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson actually blamed King George III for the existence of slavery. Interesting assertion there, right? Considering he has so many slaves, it's not his fault he has slaves. It's King George III's fault he has slaves. Okay. It's not my fault that I failed my class because I didn't study or didn't do any homework. It's the teacher's fault because he didn't remind me 17 or 18 times to do homework. Side rant. Some of the most prominent leaders of the American Revolution, including presidents, owned slaves. Some of which hundreds of slaves. Okay? Seeking independence, slaves fought on both sides and were promised. Some were even Minutemen. Many of these will not actually take place as far as earning their freedom. Yeah, sure. So that school we talked about yesterday that was all aren't they referred to as the Minutemen or do you find was One uh, they actually are the college, yeah. Um, we talked about that one of them used to be the Tories and now they're Yeah. One of them used to be the Tories and the Minutemen, now they're the Patriots. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Initially Continental Congress forbade slaves from serving in the war, but when we start losing we need them. Okay? As the war drags on, we're going to allow that roughly 5,500 slaves will serve in the war. Anytime you have a statistic, please, please, please emphasize that. 5,500. Now, in the grand scheme of the war, that doesn't seem like a lot, but that's a lot of slaves that many of which we're concerned will actually start some form of a smaller uprising. 
In the Civil War, black regiments won't be allowed until later in the war, uh, one of which the most important that many people would argue is the 54th Massachusetts. Um, has anyone ever watched the movie Glory? In the movie Glory, Denzel Washington, um, Matthew Broderick, Morgan Freeman is in it as well. Morgan. Excellent movie. It's rated R though due to violence and language for obvious reasons. Uh, but it's an excellent movie if you want to watch an insight on the 54th Massachusetts. Uh, Nonetheless, any questions on what we've covered today? Hashtag George A. Bush flag. 